All who are able, please rise, detail, post the colors. Please join me in honoring our country and our flag with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Detail retired. Prior to laying the cornerstone for Western Nebraska Community College, I would like to, I, to invite Jean Frizzell to make comments. Grandmaster, at the request of Robert W. Furness Lodge, number 265, I ask, now ask that you, as Grandmaster of Masons, lay the cornerstone of the Western Nebraska Community College in accordance with Masonic custom and usage. The officers of the Grand Lodge of Masons of Nebraska are honored to be a part of your dedication today. The local Masonic Lodge is Robert W. Furnace, number 265, and we are indebted to them for helping arrange this event. The cornerstone laying ceremony is symbolic. Masonry re relies heavily on symbol symbolism to relay its message. The cornerstone and the accompanying time capsule will be symbolically laid today for installation at a later time. We use the tools of the builder's trade to impart moral and ethical lessons. You will see the cornerstone tried by the square, which teaches morality, by the level, which teaches equality, and by the plumb, which teaches rectitude of conduct. Besides these three tests, you will also note other occurrences in threes, the three elements of corn, wine, and oil, and the lowering of the cornerstone in three distinct movement, movements accompanied by the grand honors of three times three claps. These reoccurring theme, this reoccurring theme reminds us of the three principal stages of life, namely youth, manhood, and age, as well as the three components of the complete person, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. We no longer work in stone as our fraternal ancestors did. In the original ceremony, the core or foundation stone would be lowered into the ground to serve as a starting point for a building under construction. Such cornerstones were usually a perfect cube, again symbolizing three thoughts, perfect morality, perfect equality, and perfect rectitude in life. Our lowering of the cornerstone in three distinct movements recalls that portion of the ceremony. The ceremony you will witness is, in a sense, a rite of stability, it having stood the test of time. It is essentially the same ceremony used by our Masonic brother, George Washington, 
and laying the cornerstone of our nation's capital in 1793. You will hear us addressed by titles such as worshipful, which has no religious implication, but is a term of respect, just as honorable is used in our judicial and legislative branches. Freemasonry, in its modern form, showed itself to the world in England in 1717, and many of the terms we use date back to that time. Thank you for inviting us to conduct this ceremony. I hope you enjoy it. We will now proceed with laying the cornerstone. From time immemorial, it has been the custom of the ancient and honorable fraternity of free and accepted Masons to lay, when requested to do so, with their ancient forms, the cornerstones of buildings erected for the worship of God, for educational purposes, charitable purposes, or for the purpose of the administration of justice and free government and of no other buildings. This cornerstone, therefore, we may lay in accordance with our law and gladly do so, testifying thereby our obedience to the law and our desire to show publicly our respect for the government under which we live. The teaching of Freemasonry inculcate that in all our works, great or small, begin or finish, we should seek the aid of Almighty God. It is our first duty to invoke the blessing of the great architect of the universe upon the work in which we are about to engage. I therefore command the utmost salt silence and call upon all to unite with our brother, the Grand Chaplain, in an address to the throne of grace. All who are able, please rise. A reading from the book of Psalms, which will be followed by a prayer. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who have pleasure in them. Full of honor and majesty is his word, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding to all those who practice it. His praise endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, who hath given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and thou promise that where two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, ever life, everlasting life. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Please be seated. Worshipful Grand Custodian. It has ever been the custom on occasions like the present to deposit within the cavity in the stone, certain memorials of the period in which it is erected, so that in the lapse of age, if the fury of the elements or the slow but certain ravages of time shall lay bare its foundation, an enduring record may be found by succeeding generations to bear testimony to the energy, industry, and culture of our time. Has such a deposit been prepared? It has, most worshipful Grand Master and the various articles of which it is composed are safely enclosed within the capsule of now here before you. You will read the information of those here assembled, a record of the contents of the capsule. From the Nebraska Grand Lodge, the Grand Lodge Directory, the Grand Master's Pin, and a Grand Lodge Pin. From the Western Nebraska Community College, Star Herald Grand Reopening Insert, Grand Reopening Sketch designed by faculty, staff, and students, and a Western Nebraska Community College Budget Cube. From Robert W. Furnace Lodge number 265, a list of the 2019 Lodge Officers, and the Order of the Eastern Star Dome Rock Chapter number 215 Handbook. Worshipful Grand Custodian, you will now symbolically deposit the capsule into the cabinet. And may the great architect of the universe, in his wisdom, grant that ages on ages shall pass away ere it again be seen by man. Most wonderful Grandmaster, your orders have been duly executed. 
Brother Grand Marshal, you will deliver the working tools to the proper officers. Right, Worshipful Brethren, you will receive these working tools. With your assistance and that of the craft, I will now proceed to lay the cornerstone of this edifice according to the custom of our fraternity. Brother Grand Marshal, you will direct the craftsman to furnish the cement and prepare to lower the cornerstone. All is in ready this day, personal bandmaster. At this time, I would like to have the president of Western Community College and Jean Frizzell, and I think there were some others that wanted to come up. All six of you got folks, please come forward. Masons, please rise. Brethren only, join me in giving the grand honors by three times three. Together, brethren. Brethren only, join me in giving the grand honors by three times three. Brethren only, please join me in giving the grand honors by three times three. Together, brethren. Please be seated. Right, worshipful Deputy Grand Master, what is the proper implement of your office? The square. What are its moral and Masonic uses? Morally, it teaches us to square our actions by the square of virtue, and by it we prove our work. Apply the implement of your office to those portions of the cornerstone which should be square and make report. Most worshipful Grand Master, I find the cornerstone to be square. The workmen have done their duty.
Right Worshipful Grand Senior Warden. What is the proper implement of your office? A level. What are its moral and Masonic uses? Morally, it teaches equality, and by it, we prove our work. Apply the implement of your office to that portion of the cornerstone that should be level and make report. Right Worshipful Grand Junior Warden. What is the proper implement of your office? The plum. What are its moral and Masonic uses? Morally, it teaches rectitude of conduct, and by it we prove our work. Apply the implement of your office to those portions of the cornerstone which should be plumb and make report. Most worshipful Grand Master, I find the cornerstone to be plumb. The craftsmen have done their duty. This cornerstone has been tested by the proper implements of masonry. I find that the craftsmen have skillfully and faithfully done their duty, and I do declare the cornerstone to be well formed, true and trusty, correctly proved and truly laid according to the rules of our ancient craft. May this building, having been constructed and completed, com continue amid the blessings of plenty, health, and peace. For the Grand Marshal, you will present corn, wine, and oil to the proper officers. I scatter this corn as an emblem of plenty. May the blessings of bounteous heaven be showered upon us and upon all like patriotic and important undertakings and inspire the hearts of the people with virtue, wisdom, and gratitude. I pour this wine as an emblem of joy and gladness. May the great ruler of the universe bless, the pros bless and prosper our national state and city governments and preserve the union of the states in harmony and brotherly love that they shall endure through all time.
I pour this oil as an emblem of peace. May its blessings abide with us continually. And may the God of heaven and earth shelter and protect the widow and orphan, the bereaved, the afflicted, and the sorrowing, and vouchsafe to them the enjoyment of every good and perfect gift. All who are able, please rise for prayer. May corn, wine, and oil, and all the necessities of life abound throughout the world. May the blessing of Almighty God be upon all who labor here. May this structure, having been planned with wisdom, be supported by strength and adorned with beauty. And may it be preserved to the latest ages, a monument to the energy and liberality of its founders. Amen. Please be seated. Worthy sir, having thus as Grand Master of Masons, Laid the cornerstone of this structure, I now return these implements of operative masonry to you. Having full confidence in your skill and ability to perform the important duties entrusted to you. In compliance with the request of the proper authorities, the cornerstone of the Western Nebraska Community College erected on this site has been laid in accordance with the ancient ceremonies of our craft. For the Grand Marshal, you will make proclamation thereof. In the name of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of ancient free and accepted Masons of Nebraska, I now proclaim that this building has been found true and trusty and laid in ample form, according to the old customs by the Grand Master of Masons. This proclamation is made from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. All persons having, having due notice may govern themselves accordingly. I now invite the Grand Orator to present his oration. An ancient Masonic form, the officers of the Grand Lodge, ancient, free, and accepted Masons in Nebraska, have assembled here today to celebrate the dedication of the newly renovated main building of Western Nebraska Community College, Scottsbluff Campus, and to lay a new cornerstone. From our earliest known history, Masons have performed this time-honored ceremony to dedicate lodges public buildings and memorials. In ancient times, buildings were plumbed, squared, and leveled by stone masons. Their cornerstones were the starting points of all buildings, and if not done perfectly, the quality of the entire structure would steadily diminish throughout the course of its lifespan. Since a cornerstone is perfectly hewn, it is symbolic of the quality of education this facility will produce throughout its own lifespan. The officers of the Grand Lodge of Nebraska have now symbolically examined this building and ensured it is plumbed, squared, and leveled to carry on a tradition of civic pride and learning that permeates the history of Western Nebraska Community College. Western Nebraska Community College in this very building have been a part of the Scotts Bluff community for 50 years, and the much anticipated renovations to the main building were completed over a two year period of time and at a cost of $18.5 million. Additions to the building include the Platte Valley Company's Performing Arts Center and Judy Chalupka Theater, 
the Howard Olson Student Success Center, the Learning Commons, Buddy's Books and Bistro, and the Coral E. Richards Ballroom. The Performing Arts Center offers a new place for patrons to socialize outside of the theater, while the theater itself is equipped with a round table stage, comfortable seating, and top of the line sound quality. Most student services will be housed in the Howard Olson Student Success Center, including financial aid, registrar's office, counseling, and advising. While the Learning Commons does house the campus library, it provides a warm environment for studies with south-facing windows overlooking the Scotts Bluff National Monument and a 360-degree fireplace, which I kind of want to see. Buddy's Books and Bistro will be much more than a bookstore. While it will include textbooks, Western Nebraska Community College apparel, and school supplies, a focal point, I'm sure, will be the new coffee shop in Bistro. The Coralie Richards Ballroom, located in the lower level and named after a much beloved longtime board secretary, will provide a functional workspace for the board of Western Nebraska Community College to chart the future of this institution. The main building has served the community well over the last 50 years, and the renovations will ensure that that service continues well into the future. In the words of Dr. John Ann Harms, interim president of Western Nebraska Community College, now more than ever, Western Nebraska Community College is here to enrich and invigorate the communities we serve. And we hope the transformation of the Scotts Bluff main campus building will serve to transform the lives of our students for years. On this day, we dedicate a building whose spirit and legacy is already hallowed by the noble efforts of previous generations. You are strengthening the chain of your history that connects those who originally envisioned the creation of this school to those who seek to ensure its integrity throughout the horizons of future periods. Remember that you are henceforth the custodians, not only of this magnificent facility itself, but also of the future integrity of the foundations of education in this area. In closing, like our brother George Washington, the Grand Lodge in Nebraska is proud to use the familiar working tools of ancient stone masons to lay the cornerstone of this grand edifice. We are humbled to perform our time-honored ceremony observing the dedication of the main building of Western Nebraska Community College, Scotts Bluff Campus. We extend to you and to all who enter its doors the very best of wishes in the years to come. Thank you. The benediction will now be pronounced by our brother, the Grand Chaplain. All who are able, please rise. Let us pray. Glory be to God on high, on earth peace and goodwill toward men. O Lord, we, must, we most heartily beseech thee with thy favor to behold and bless this assembly. Pour down thy mercies like the dew that fell upon, upon the mountains, upon thy servants, engage in the solemn ceremonies of this day. Bless, we pray thee, all the workers and citizens who are engaged in the erection of this edifice. Grant them health and prosperity in life. Finally, we hope after this life, through thy mercy and forgiveness, to attain everlasting joy and felicity in that bright mansion, that holy temple not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Amen and amen. Amen. Please be seated. I have a few thank yous here. Uh, first of all, to Robert W. Furnace Lodge, number 265, for inviting us to perform this ceremony. To uh, Worshipful Master Don Luce for arranging a lot of this ceremony. <coughs> to Alice and Judy for helping arrange this cer ceremony. To the Western Nebraska Community College Veterans Upward Bound Honor Guard 
for serving as honor guard, presenting the colors, to Adam Flowers for providing the trumpet, to Mike Schultz with RDG for serving as the architect, and to each of you for taking part in this ceremony. And I'm going to introduce the uh, Grand Lodge officers present here today. First of all, to start off with, uh, my personal, one of my personal representatives, Wayne Vine, from Grand Island, Nebraska, and his wife, Sharon. I know she's out there. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Graham Tyler, Larry Donner from Burwell, Nebraska. Grand Junior Steward, Jock Ferris from Alliance. Grand Marshal, Rob Kane from Valley. Grand Orator, Mike Stewart from Omaha. Grand Chaplain, John Herbelsheimer from Gretna. Uh, Grand Junior Deacon, John Ferguson from Kimple and his wife, Liz. Deputy Grandmaster Ron Stites from Papillion, and I'm Bob Moninger, Grandmaster from Burwell also. Uh, at this time, Allison, did you want to come up and make some comments? Thank you. Just a quick note to thank the Grand Lodge for coming to Scott's Bluff today. The weather cooperated for us. Uh, we must have brought it with us. And with you, uh, just thank you for being here and taking part in this ceremony um, to community members who attended. And um, of course, all those who haven't seen our new facilities, we really welcome you to come and tour the spaces. Um, we'll be gathering right inside our main entrance um, for those who would like to take a tour. And then please stick around. We have our um, business after hours hosted by our local Scotts Book Dairy and Chamber of Commerce. So thank you all again for attending. Thanks. No, we didn't bring this weather coming from the east going to the west because usually it's rain back east. <laughs> and a lot of it this year anyhow. This concludes the ceremony. I thank you all very much for attending and safe travels to all. <laughs>